everyone, my name is Jill. On behalf of Pastors Ron and Gina, welcome to Faith Life International Church. Before we start service, let's take a look at the announcements. Have you plugged into a life group yet? Aside from the word-centered discussion, life groups are an opportunity to deepen your connections with like-minded believers, all while enjoying food and fellowship. Don't miss another week of these transformational gatherings. Scan the QR code to fill out the life group locator form and get plugged in. It's time to hippity hoppity over to the Resource Center, your one-stop shop for all the Easter fun your heart desires. There are so many cool things for purchase, including baskets, Easter eggs filled with candy and more. Stop in before or after service to stock up while supplies last. Have you recently joined the ministry and are ready to take your connection to the next level? Join us for Growth Track beginning on April 7th as the instructors teach you all about the ministry and all the ways you fit in the vision. Please see Deacons Curtis and Zenobia Proctor to secure your spot or email czproctor at faithlife.tv. Time is quickly approaching for Easter and we are so stoked about the powerful play, The Verdict, written by our very own Pastor Gina Holmes. Join us with your family and friends as we celebrate our risen Savior with musical selections, beautiful ministering dance, a powerful play, and an on-time word. Tell everyone you know, this is a can't-miss day. That's it for the announcements. Now we'll continue with worship followed by the word. We hope you enjoy. Amen. That lion gets me every time. Amen. Good morning, Faith Life. Good morning, good morning. We're so glad that you have joined us this morning. You know, even in preparing for service this morning, I was thinking about Palm Sunday and what this week means. And so for those who've joined us online, we're so glad that you are with us. If you don't know what Palm Sunday is, I'll just tell you just a little bit about this week. This is the Sunday that begins the Passion Week where Jesus came into Jerusalem knowing good and well what lied ahead and decided that all of us were worth it. So if God decided that we were worth it, isn't it just our reasonable sacrifice to give him praise this morning? Amen. So we don't have to wait until Resurrection Sunday. We can praise now knowing that it is a finished work. So we're so excited that you've joined us. We've had our announcements. We've already set the atmosphere in prayer. And immediately we're going to go into worship. And then we're going to go into the word. And then we're going to have an opportunity to sow. Will you pray with me really quickly? God, we thank you for this day. We thank you that we always say that this is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And on this day, we have a new understanding and a new revelation of what it means to praise you. We thank you, God, for the sacrifice that you have already made. And we thank you that this week we get to be reminded that you counted us worth it. And so we put our hands together already. We put our hands together already. And we say, thank you, Jesus. We say, thank you, Jesus. And we give you our reasonable sacrifice of praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's get ready to worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
is not dead. He is alive. Come on, do you know what that actually means? That means we have the opportunity now to come into his presence. That that veil has been torn. That we can actually experience heaven here on earth because of the blood. Because of the Savior sacrificing himself. Hey, haven't you heard it? is in
experience the way the world experiences things, but when you touch the hem of his garment, when you touch and reach for Jesus, there's a transformative work that he begins to do. And now you are without walking, talking, breathing, moving miracle because he's done something in you, life-changing, rearranging, taking the addiction, taking the sin, and removing it out of your life. There's something
anything hindering your praise this morning. If I'm speaking to depression, you must bow. If I'm speaking to sickness, you must bow. If I'm speaking to mental anguish, you must bow. If I'm speaking to bitterness, that thing that's been holding you back from your praise, the thing that's been holding you back, see the King of Kings is in the room. And I don't want you to miss the opportunity with the King of Glory. Because when you get a touch from the King of Glory, like we said, things begin to change. So I want you today to speak to the thing that has been ailing you. Speak to the thing that's been holding you. We command it by the Spirit of God. That lion that lives in you, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. We speak to the thing with power in mind this morning. You have to go. You have to bow. You have to low. You have to come down. You have to bow the knee before Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You must bow. Come on, there's a praise about to erupt because every destruction, every tactic of the enemy, I'm going to use my weapon in return. So 
yourself before a king. There's a certain way we are when we posture ourselves before royalty. The king of kings and the lord of lords. He deserves our undivided attention. Come on, if you had a busy week, if you had a trying week, but now you're in the presence of God, lay that thing down. Begin to have Jesus on your mind. Picture the picture the king walking the aisles. The weight of the train of his robe fills the temple. The train of his robe fills the temple.
just do that? Can we be the children of God who cry holy? Holy, holy are you, Jesus. Holy are you, Lord. God, we thank you that we don't have to let the angels cry. We don't have to let the rocks cry out in our place. We get to lift our hands. We get to call you holy. We get to sing with the angels. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. God, we thank you for this time of worship. We thank you for being put in reminded, being reminded, put in reminders of who you are, God. You are holy. You are worthy. There is none like you. You are great and greatly to be praised. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. You are El Shaddai. You are all of these things, and yet still, you chose to call us your own. So we thank you for this time of worship. We thank you for the word that's about to come forth unhindered, unchecked by any satanic or demonic force. We thank you, God, that you are with us, you are in us, you are for us. We are yours, and we are grateful in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 You know, I used to hear the old folks say it, but I'm just having that moment. Isn't it good just to be counted? Isn't it good just to be counted children of God? Hallelujah. We're so grateful once again. If you weren't here already this morning or if you're just joining us online, we're so grateful that you've joined us. This is a special service, so I didn't usually get to greet you in the middle anymore, but we're so excited about what God is doing, and because this is a special service, we wanted to take a time to do a special selection to put us in the atmosphere as we prepare for resurrection, as we prepare for the crucifixion, to remember every bit of who Jesus is and the sacrifice that was made for us. So we're going to go into a time of worship. Worship is not over. Worship is a lifestyle, but I'm so glad to see that you are still standing because that is our posture of expectation. We're gonna have one more time of worship. I ask you to join with, and then after that, the next voice that you will hear will be the voice of our pastor, Pastor Ron Holmes. Amen? Amen. of the Godhead bodily. He is the image of the invisible God, our Sabbath, our rest. The Word made flesh, prophet, priest, and king. Unto you we've seen. In him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He is the image of the invisible God, our Sabbath, our rest. The Word made flesh, prophet, priest, and king. Unto you we sing, Jesus. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus. He was the Lamb of God, the Lamb that was slain before the foundations of the world. Jesus. He said he was the resurrection and the life, and those that believe in him shall live and not die. He's the lion and the lamb. He's the great I am. From the dead he raised, exalted and praised. He raised forever. There will never be another. Jesus the Messiah, the way, truth, and life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Bless the they who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled, Jesus. Said to the world, you're a light, shining in the darkness, a 
city on the hill, Jesus taught us how to pray. Our Father, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Jesus. Jesus, 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 to die by Peter three times to die Jesus beaten at the whipping post hangs on the cross the disciples scattered when they needed him the most Jesus declares it is finished into your hands I commend my spirit Jesus descend into hell confronts principalities and Lucifer who Welcome, Pastor Ron Holmes. Hallelujah. 
Oh, come on, you just call this name, not giving praise. Somebody in here. Hallelujah. Come on. He is our, not just our soon coming king, but our reigning king. Come on, give it up for Jesus, somebody. Hallelujah. We give you praise, Master. We give you praise. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus, we bless you. Jesus, we honor you. Hallelujah. Jesus, we honor and we call your name. Hallelujah. We give you praise. Yes, 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 yes. Glory to God. Amen, amen, amen. That's good stuff. Come on, give the, first of all, give the Lord Jesus a, a, a great big hand clap of praise right now. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, if you don't mind, just clap your hands. Uh, and, you know, let's just bless the worship team and just thank them for all of that and helping to set the atmosphere this morning. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. Glory to God. Amen. Love it. Love it when a plan comes together. Love the anointing. Amen, somebody. Is that good stuff? Praise God. Turn to somebody and say, did you get that? Did you enjoy that? They were preaching to you, not just singing. Aren't they? They were preaching, not just singing. Glory to God. Pointing you in the direction of the gift of God, the answer. <laughs> Hallelujah, the real answer. Glory to God. Turn to somebody and say, God, Jesus, God, Jesus, and wait for them to answer you. Come on, don't just say it. Turn to somebody else and say, God, Jesus, God, Jesus, because if you don't got Jesus, we can, we can give you Jesus. Amen. So, <laughs> is that all right in here, somebody? Give the Lord one more real big hand clap of praise. Amen, 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 amen. Glory to God. I'm excited about today. But, you know, I, I'm excited about our church. You know, I, I'm excited about our church. I love our church. Yeah, come on. Am I the only one in here? I love our church. I love our people. Amen, somebody in here. There's no place I'd rather be than in front of you on a Sunday morning, and that's saying a lot because I like food. Amen, somebody. <laughs> Glory to God. I just can't wait to get out there and get some food, but I love uh, I love being in front of you, amen, and love being in the presence of God. How many sense the presence of the Lord? Yeah, love being in the presence of the Lord, love being in the presence of God, amen. So many answers awaiting us in God's presence, and let me say, uh, let me have everybody be seated real quick. Uh, I love you, and I'm just going to do this because I don't want to have to wait to do it later. Can I get everybody that's in the play and has anything to do with the play at all to just stand real quick? Can you do that real quick? Glory to God. Can we give them? Look, look around. Look around. And I know everybody's not in here, but I, I just, I am so, Pastor Gina and I are so proud of you. Glory to God. You have no idea. Number one, you give me a day off. Praise the Lord. But <laughs> beyond, beyond giving me a day off, you got to work diligently, man, and hard and giving up your Sundays, not just your Sunday mornings, but your time after Sunday. I mean, still on Sunday, but the time after that. So give them a real big God bless you one more time. Really means the world, and we don't want to take lightly the sacrifices that you are making. I know some of you are still learning your lines and all of that. Uh, just be in a flow on, be, be ready to flow on next Sunday. Praise God. Amen, somebody. Now, here's what I'm going to ask one more time. How many have given out the little cards to everybody in every place? Oh, y'all got me nervous. Okay. All right. More of them are popping up. We need you to give those out, and we need you to, to invite them because here again, um, people are going to come, and we want to pack the house out. How many want to pack it out for the Lord on that day? Glory to God. We don't want to just give you church. We want to give you Jesus. Amen, somebody. And I love, uh, I, I always love the way my wife writes her plays, but this one seems especially special. So give Pastor Gina. 
a great big round of applause. I am so excited about that. I haven't seen any of it, so I'm going to be just as shocked and blessed. And uh, don't give me any spoilers, because I don't like spoiler alerts. How many hate it when you go into a movie and somebody say, you know, at the end, he dies? You do know that, right? Like, thank you. Amen, somebody. But uh, how many know our God, hey, he, 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 he rises from the dead. Spoiler alert, I'm sorry. Yeah, spoiler. Yeah, you need to know that. <laughs> Amen, somebody. So I, I am really excited. So thank you guys for really making uh, the play possible. And then those who have watched their kids while they were busy learning, give those people as well, the ones who, while they're taking out time, there are people who are watching their kids. There are people who are, you know, I mean, just kind of hanging in there and having fun and playing the same game with the kids five and six times. But, you know, you, you got to do it. Amen, somebody? Praise God. Because I don't know about you, but how many plan for that? How many believe in God with me that souls are going to be one, even in the midst of this sermon that will be demonstrated? Amen, somebody. So we're going to have a ball. But listen, can you do this for me? Turn to somebody and say, invite a friend, invite a couple friends. Come on, that, that is your ticket to get in. We don't have to play cover charge of $30 to get in, but we, we want your ticket to get in. Two or more friends, invite them so that they can experience God on that day. Amen, somebody? They'll experience a the play, but I believe God will be all up in and through here. Amen, somebody? Believe that anointing will be on everything. Amen. Praise God. And help us pray for uh, that, that it will minister grace to the hearers. Amen, somebody. Just like the Word ministers grace, I believe the play will also, because of the words that are coming forth, I believe it will minister grace to the hearers. Put somebody and say, make sure you invite somebody now. Not the day before. Not the day before Sunday. But may, oh, I tried to invite them. No, no, no. I mean, like, you, you need to get to them way before that. Amen, somebody. Promise, promise them a happy meal. No, a big kid's meal. Make sure. Oh, they don't call it big kids. Mighty kids? Where would I get that from? Mighty kids. Okay. See, I don't know about that, but I heard it. So I can renew my prophet's license. Amen. Somebody. Amen. Are y'all excited about this morning? Oh, that don't help me. Hey, are y'all excited about this morning? <laughs> Glory to God. I'm going to teach something now. I don't know that I've ever taught this, number one, period, but I don't know that I've ever taught this like this. I know I have, in many cases, kind of spoke over this. Like we speak through things, like most pastors, we will speak stuff, and we'll just kind of ride through the story real quick, but not necessarily teach the story so people can have insight. So today, I actually want to give you a little insight on some things because uh, being up at 3 in the morning, having to know God talks to you. Amen. You and God are the only ones up at that time. Praise God. But it was funny. I thought I was. And then one pastor wrote me, and I was like, bro, it's 3 in the morning, man. What you? Okay. Amen, somebody. But I realized that we all are kind of up, kind of preparing during that time. And it is Palm Sunday. Come on. Give the Lord a hand clap. I want to talk about Palm Sunday. I want to talk about what that's all about. Normally, I would just kind of go with the flow and kind of do a different message. But today, I want to talk about Palm Sunday. Is that all right, somebody? Now, I named it something unique. Uh, can y'all put that up? I named it, uh, I think, something like Real Life Lessons from a Donkey Ride. Yeah, Life Lessons from a Donkey Ride. I just, you know, <laughs> how'd you get that one? Well, that's I just like, what, what does this look like? And there's a lot of insight that I want to give. Now, I encourage you, again, we're moving into this thing of more and more evangelism. Uh, can you put my guy that I just, uh, I just led this guy to the Lord. I want everybody to see him so you can be praying for him. Yeah, I, um, I'm over at that Boston Coffee. And at Boston Coffee, I got to, you know, isn't it amazing? And I, I want you guys to do this because sometimes I think you do what I do. But I woke up and I said, Lord, I want to lead somebody to the Lord today, man. I want, to, I want somebody to know Jesus. Anybody been there like, you know, you're enjoying Jesus so much? And I said, I want, to, I want somebody, to, I just want somebody to know you. So show me who you would have me to lead to you. Just get my attention and I'll be your mouthpiece. And while the guy was serving me drinks and stuff and all of that stuff, 
uh, the Lord began to talk to me about them. And I said, well, give me how to do this. Just give me a, you know, give me an open door. And at a certain point, I just say, hey, man, you're a good guy. I can tell you're a good guy. You're a Christian. You know Jesus. And he said, well, you know, me and God have a thing. And I said, really? So if you die right now, you'd be, you know you'd be going to heaven. He said, I think I'd be all right. I said, well, you know, can we make sure? He said, yeah. I said, can I pray for you? He said, absolutely. And how many know shortly thereafter, he's part of the family. Yeah, he, he, we, got a, we got a born again believer at Boston Coffee House. <laughs> and so I'm encouraging you, a lot of you guys, listen, sometimes the reason people plateau, especially in uh, challenging times like now, is we hear the gospel, we just don't do the gospel. We get the word, we just don't walk out the word. So, you know, Pastor, give me something good and then hot right now. Blah, blah. Well, that's great as long as you put feet to the word that you receive. I don't know about you, but when I get to heaven, I want a line of people that I led to the Lord, on, you know, on my lawn when I get out there. Amen, somebody. Come on, how many understand that God doesn't count his wealth by gold streets? So you'll be walking on all that, but God counts his wealth by the souls he possesses. Say amen. So turn to somebody and say, I need you to make God richer this week. No, we can't make God rich. It's just you can because he counts his wealth by the souls he possesses. So he loves it when you tell people about Jesus. Amen. How many know Jesus is coming? Jesus is soon to come. Oh, if you don't know that, you better get it together soon and you better hurry. Jesus is soon to come, man. Just look outside and you'll know it's, it's not long from here. Amen, somebody. So, uh, you know, make your calling and election sure. Is that okay? Amen. All right, let's stand to our feet. I just want to give you a moment to breathe, and we're going to get right into this. All right, life lessons. How many can handle some more life lessons? I'll give you a few life lessons from a donkey ride. Amen, somebody. Usually when you go to the fair, the kids don't get on a donkey. Usually they get on ponies. But Jesus went a little bit further than that. Amen, somebody. So we're going to talk about that. Hold that Bible up high. Glory to God. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah again. Hallelujah. Amen, somebody. Hold that Bible up and just repeat after me. Come on, say, this is my Bible. Come on, say it like you mean it. Say, this is my Bible. Say, it is the voice of God to me. Come on, say, I am who it said I am. Say, I can have what it said I can have. Come on, say, I can do all that it said I can do. Say, this morning, say, I will be taught the oracles of God. Say, my ears are anointed to hear. Say, my mind is alert. Say, my heart is ready to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living Word of God. Come on, say, I'll never be the same. Turn to the neighbor behind you on your right side and say, you'll never be the same. You don't know where your right side? Okay, my right side. Okay, on your side. Yeah, right there. Say, you'll never be the same. Say, we'll never be the same again in Jesus' mighty name. Come on now, look, give the Lord a crazy shout of praise in here. Come on, give the Lord a crazy shout of praise in here, somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Glory to God. All right, so uh, I'm excited. Now, where we're going, you're going to need to uh, have your, your pad and your pen and your stuff. Y'all don't do pads and pens no more. Uh, your iPad and anything you can write on. Uh, write on the back of somebody if you have to. But, you know, just, you know, you're going to need to write some stuff down. Is that all right? Say, Pastor told me I can do it. I know you just bought this jacket, but Pastor said I can do this. Praise God. All right. <laughs> Hey, don't you dare. <laughs> and we'd be both buying them a jacket. Amen, somebody. But uh, we're going to get ready to have some fun. But before I do, I want you to go real quick to about four people, and I want you to tell them something good is going to happen for you this morning. Come on. I want you to declare. Find four people. Don't be lazy. You're not lazy. Amen. Find four people. Glory to God. Come out of that seat. Come out that corner. <laughs> Amen, somebody in here. Something good. Something good is going to happen for you this morning. 
Yep, yep, yep. Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. All right, I love you. You can make your way back to your seats if you can. If you got at least four or five, five is the number of grace. Amen, somebody in here. Y'all got it? Are we okay? Praise God. Who said sit down? Simon didn't say sit down. No, no, you can say that. You can be seated. Praise God. I'm just messing with you. You're okay. I'm, I'm just messing with you. Praise God. You <laughs> they just, no, I didn't, I didn't say sit down, but you're okay. All right. Praise God. All right. John chapter 12. And we're going to go 12 through 15. John chapter 12. And we're going to go 12 through 15. Praise God. Again, today is Palm Sunday, and I want to give you a few points about Palm Sunday. I think it's going to help you. Amen, somebody? I want to get in that. And uh, real quick, just so, now I really believe under the anointing I will get to all three points. But in case I, you know, yeah, well, we're not, not even going to put it in case. But real quick, I want you to see what the points are so that you can just be prepared for me to speak into a couple things. So point number one. Praise God. Point number one, uh, we always talk about Carmen did a song called Hosanna, Hosanna. I mean, I remember that. Blessed are he who comes in the name of the Lord. Okay, you, you, you know that one. But, but Carmen did that, but Hosanna, Hosanna. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Hosanna has to do with a lifestyle. Hosanna has to do with a lifestyle, not just a temporary uh, petition. Hosanna has to do with a lifestyle. Now, we're going to define Hosanna, and we're going to talk about that, but it has to do with not just a uh, temporary petition before the Lord, but we want to talk about Hosanna as a lifestyle. Amen, somebody? You know, just like you don't want to be a worshiper only at church. That does not make you a true worshiper. But how many know we want to be a true worshiper in life? Amen. When they give you too much money back at Walmart, a true worshiper gives the money back. Where'd my amens go? A true worshiper gives the money back. A true worshiper does not say, thank you, Jesus. God, I was wondering where it was going to come from. Glory to God. No, no, no. It's called stealing with your sanctified self. A amen, somebody. Are y'all here? So, you know, a true worshiper would do that. It's not, not just about lifting your hands, but it's about a lifestyle. Amen, somebody? All right, point number, two. <laughs> point number two, are you here? Point number two, fear not. You've heard that before. Fear not, especially in times like these. Don't be afraid. God wants you to stay in a position of believing. Why? Because when you continue to believe, you remain in the winner's circle. Amen. Never dig up in f fear what you've already sown in faith. Fear not. Amen, somebody? Put somebody and say, We're the, we, we live the fearless life. We live the fearless life. Amen, somebody. And then point number three, let's do it real quick. Point number three, preparing for the God of the unexpected. He's not just the God. He's not just King of kings, Lord of lords. He is not just the Lord of the harvest. Are y'all following me? He's not just the God of comfort, but he is also the God of the unexpected. I mean, no, God likes to surprise you sometimes. That's how much he loves you. Amen. All right, is that good? Okay, give the Lord a hand clap real quick, and we'll get right into this. Uh, what I'm going to talk about is, is all through the Gospels, you know, Palm Sunday. How many know it's all in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? You'll find it there, but today I want to really pull on and I want to talk uh, regarding the book of John. So uh, if you can get prepared to go there, the book of John chapter 12, I want to talk about uh, this, and then I want to pull up two prophetic words. I want you to pull up those two uh, Old Testament prophecies that are quoted, and um, if you'll notice when they're quoted, they're co quoted kind of close together, together, and I want to go there. Amen, somebody. So we're going to start with John chapter 12. Are y'all still here? Come on, shout hallelujah if you're here. Amen. John chapter 12, and we're going to go 12 through 15. We're going to get right into this and uh, hopefully give you a little insight. Praise God. John chapter 12, and we're going to go 12 through 15. Again, I'm reading from the New King James Version, John chapter 12, 12 through, six, through uh, 15, and we're going get, to get going. Let's read it together. Three, two, one. Ready, read. The next day, a great multitude that had come to the feast when they had heard that Yeshua or that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, what did they do? They actually took branches 
of what? Palm trees. That's where we get the term Palm Sunday, right? Took branches of palm trees and did what? Yeah, yeah. They, they went out to meet him and they cried out something that was interesting. Now, I love my man Kirk, but he says, you know, what's his name? Hosanna. Well, it's not exactly God's name. You know, it actually has a, you know, but Kurt, Kurt's cool. I don't miss what I'm saying. But, but it's just not exactly his name. Are y'all here? Hosanna. He, they, he said, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the, the name of the Lord, the, the King of Israel. Uh, underline that or put stars by it. That's interesting that for the first time ever, they are calling him king. Very, very significant there. Amen, somebody? That's a quote again from the Old Testament, uh, and I'll show you that in a minute. Let's keep going. Verse 14, let's read. Then Jesus, when he had found a young donkey, underline that one, young donkey, uh, and had sat on it as it is written, what? Verse 15, fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, what? Your king is coming, sitting not on necessarily just a donkey, but a donkey's sitting on a donkey's coat. Praise God. Is that good? So I'm going to take these two Old Testament uh, prophecies that were quoted here in John, and we're going to talk about it. I just want to pull out maybe three or four truths out of this that I really feel like will help you on Palm Sunday. Is that all right? And, and, and we want to give you insights that's going to just be a game changer, I believe, for your life. Is that okay? As we talk about this, I think it's going to be important. It's going to be a blessing to your Christian walk. Amen? All right. Uh, number one, point number one, Hosanna. Hosanna. Hosanna means save us now. Actually, it means save now, but when you look at it in context, it's save us now. So it's more of a petition. It's, Lord, save us now. Save us now. Uh, it ha and again, when we're talking about uh, honoring the Lord, thanking the Lord, this needs to be a lifestyle. Just like tithing uh, keeps the windows of heaven basically open over your life, how many know Thanksgiving keeps the gate open? The Bible says, enter into his gates. Okay, I need all y'all here. Say, so enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his into his courts with, with praise. Amen, somebody. So uh, it needs to be a lifestyle. Say it needs to be my lifestyle. It needs to be a lifestyle and not just a temporary p uh, petition. So let's look again at verse 13, and we're going to read it together. 3, 2, 1, verse 13 of what we just read. John chapter 12, verse 13. We're going to read it one more time. 3, 2, 1, ready, read. He took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, and they cried out, what? Hosanna, Hosanna, what? Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Who is he? He is, he is the king of Israel. It says that they cried out Hosanna. First of all, let me explain something real light to you. This is the very first time that Israel actually called Jesus the king. Say amen, somebody in here. The first time they actually called Jesus the king. And in so doing, they actually were saying with, with, that, with that speech or with that declaration, they were saying, you are the Messiah. Come on, come on, somebody in here, because they're quoting a messianic scripture. Say amen, somebody. So this is the first time they recognize him, not just as prophet, but they recognize him as king. Oh, shout hallelujah and hear somebody. Why is that important? Well, the Bible said that Matthew chapter 10, 41 through 42, I'm going to remember that. He said that if you receive a prophet, and how many know Jesus was that prophet? Amen. If you receive a prophet, he wasn't only prophet, though. But the Bible says if you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, what's going to happen? You'll receive what? You're going to receive a prophet's reward. Now, what's a prophet's reward? Long life and what? Prosperity. Amen, somebody. Is that good? Praise God. So, long life and prosperity. And uh, he says, if you receive a righteous man. Maybe it's not in the fivefold ministry, but if you receive a righteous man in the name of a righteous man, he says, there's still a reward attached to that. Why? Because God is a rewarder. Amen, somebody. 
Bible says, seek me and you'll find me when you do what? When you search for me with all of your heart. He says he rewards them that diligently seek him. So you're not asking for all these things. It's just in God's heart to bless you. Say amen, somebody. So he says, he who received the righteous man in the name of a righteous man. He says, here's the promise from heaven. You will receive a righteous man's reward. Now, verse 42, it says, whoever gives even uh, if you begin to bless or a cup of water to these little ones, he says, uh, in the name of a disciple even, he says, assuredly, I'm saying to you, he says, that will not go without a reward. Say amen, somebody. But here they are welcoming the king of Israel, and then they quote the scripture using the word Hosanna. Everybody shout Hosanna. Let's do that again. Hosanna. Hosanna. I, I've asked people all over, and I would ask, you know, hey, what, is, what does that mean to you? What, what does Hosanna mean? What do you think it means? And how many know mostly what you hear from people, even Christians, is praise? It means praise, Pastor. It means praise when we say Hosanna. Well, that sounds good. Now, hallelujah, yeah, I get you, giving God the highest praise. But Hosanna is not necessarily just that. Amen, somebody in here. Amen. It's what most people think. But the first part, Hosanna, write this down, means save. The first part, part of that, Hosanna, means to save. The second part, na, has to do with now. I don't know about y'all, but I've gone through, I've been a Christian for, uh, I think we're pushing close to 40 now, years. And how many know there's a time you need the presence of God, and there's other times I need you right now. I, I don't need you to wait. I don't need you to take some time. I don't need to be in a waiting room. God, I'd go turn to somebody and say, I know what he's talking about. There are times that you don't need, uh, you know, that blessing on delay. I need you right now. I need an answer right now. Now, here's the awesome thing. How many understand that God is our refuge and strength? And the Bible says he, you know, how many remember the old folks that used to say, may not come when you want them, sweetheart. May not come when you want them, baby. But he's always on time. But that's good talking, but just not good teaching. Why? Because the Bible says he don't have to come. He's a very present help. He's already here. Amen. When I release my prayer petition, I don't have to, it doesn't have to go higher than the ceiling. Why? Because he is on the inside of me. Amen. So my help is already. Turn to somebody and say, your help is here. Your, your help is already here. Say amen, somebody. So Hosan means to save, and that last part, na, has to do with now. Say amen, somebody. And I want to show you a scripture from the Old Testament that I think will just kind of bear this out. So watch this, because this is how it's written in the Old Testament, and it's, this is how, how it's quoted. Go real quick to Psalm 118. Are you still here? Is this good? All right, Psalm 118, and we're going to go 25 and 26. When you got to say, I have it. Uh, okay, Psalms again, 118, 25 through 26, New King James Version. They're quoting the exact same thing that you just heard. They're just saying it like this. Let's read it. Three, two, one, ready, read. Save what? Save now. Lord, we need you now. <laughs> Save now. Amen, somebody. Keep going. I pray, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, I pray. Do what? Sin now prosperity. Just wanted you to know that they bring the economy into it too. Sin now. Lord, if you're here, that means we should be blessed. Oh, come on in here. Verse 26. He says, Bless is he who comes. How? In the name of the Lord, we have blessed you from the, from the house of the Lord. So they're, they're not only saying it's affecting our economy, but this is exactly where they were at the nation. Save us now, they were saying, and this is the scripture that they are quoting. Oh, if that's good stuff, give the Lord a hand clap. Glory to God. Just want you to know why we do what we do, and sometimes you have to have the backstory. Say amen, somebody in here. So think about it. How many times have we prayed a prayer, God, I need you to, I need you, I need to get out of this right now. God, I need you to help me now. God, just save us now. Lord, we need you right now. God, me and my family need you. We don't know what to do, so we just need you now. Well, look at me. Part of it, I think, is when you don't know what to do, you do know what to do. Let's do that one more time. When you don't know what to do, you're going to walk out of here knowing what to do. Say amen, somebody. Why? Because he says that anointing is what teaches you. 
That means that sometimes I'm going to be home and that sometimes I'm going to be, uh, you know, I'm a gamer. I'm going to be doing this. So I'm going to be in a different spot. And at that time, I cannot reach Pastor Ron. And I'm going to need to know what to do at the time I need it. Say amen, somebody. Well, there's several ways you can do that. Number one, how many know it's there's a thing called praise? I can honor the Lord right where I am. I can think about the goodness of Jesus, and I can begin to raise a standard in that grocery store, and I can begin to praise. I can go to that library. I might have to do it quietly, but how many know I can lift those antennas and supernaturally draw in the presence of God? Say amen, somebody, that no matter where I am, I can shift the atmosphere. You're a change agent. You got to know how to shift the atmosphere. Turn to somebody and say, he ain't just talking to me, he's talking to you. Amen. You can shift the atmosphere. Why? Because when I begin to honor the Lord, how many know his address is P.O. Box praise? The Bible says it doesn't matter the darkness that you're encroaching or, or, or what's happening. He says when I lift my hand and I honor the Lord, he says he lives in, he inhabits the praises. Somebody better lift your hand in here. That was, that was a, a real awesome door for you to lift your hand and praise the Lord. He didn't bring you in here to fail. He brought you in here to win. Oh, come on. Praise God real quick. I, I, I'm going to give you a second. Come on. Pray them for what he's doing in your house. Praise you. Pray them for what he's doing with your spouse. Pray them for what he's doing in your pocketbook. Praise him for what he's doing right now. You don't have to wait for a praise service. You got to know how to praise him right where you are. That's what I'm talking about. Amen, somebody in here. And if he's got to beg you to praise, I don't know what to tell you. Say amen, somebody in here. Well, he's saying praise, but I ain't feeling like it. Wouldn't it be something if God didn't feel like blessing you? I was watching you in church the other Sunday. Pastor said praise, and you didn't feel like it. So you know what? You're like, no, no, Lord, you can't be like that. I need you. <laughs> well, how many know he inhabits our praise? It's not that he needs our praise, but he receives our praise. Say amen. Come on, wave your hand in the presence of the Lord. Is that good? He receives our praise. He wants you to praise them. Amen, somebody. But we're saying, they're, they're saying, save us, God, right where we are. We need you right now. Don't wait, Jesus. We need you now. Amen, somebody. How many have ever been at that time, whether it's at that job or wherever you were, and you needed the Lord to speak then? And how many know God has a way of speaking, and it doesn't have to be boisterous and loud? But yet it changes something dramatically because you hear the voice of God. Amen, somebody. Psalm chapter 46, 1 through 2. So glad I came today. Thank you, guys. Psalms 46, 1 through 2. Let's read it real quick. Psalm 26, 1 through 2. It says, God is our refuge. He's what I retreat to. If I get my feelings hurt, I don't, get, I don't go to phone ministry. Pastor, you get your feelings hurt, you'll never know it. But, but, but no, no, you know, there's some people who get their feelings hurt. And when you do, you retreat in his presence. God is our refuge. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a, it's a strong tower. What happens when, when the righteous get challenged? They, they run into it, and what happens? They are safe. They're safe from those attacks. They're safe from those fiery darts because the name of the Lord. God is our refuge and strength. He is a very, he's a pre present help. I like to say it like this, even when I'm in trouble. It's not just when I'm in trouble, but he is a present help even when I'm in trouble. Why? Because I don't have to be in trouble to pull on my strength. Why? Because he says, my, the joy of the Lord is my strength. How many got joy in serving God? Why am I saying that? Because with dark times that are ahead for some, for some folks, you have to understand that this culture is pushing that you tolerate church, but the fun is out there. Y'all ain't liking me, but it's okay. And we, we, we got to get back to a place where we enjoy. When I got headaches and stuff, I find the house of God. When I'm dealing with depression, I find the house of God. When I'm feeling lonely and like nobody's standing before me but my wife, I mean, no, I find the house of God. We got to get back to a place where, come on, life is, come on, found. Uh, the anointing is found. The help I need, the standard is raised when I come to the house of God. Fun time, the night. I won't tolerate church and then I'm going to find my fun out here. 
Guys, that's backwards, but let me tell you, there are all churches all over America that are dealing with this. That outside is where the fun is, but we tolerate church. We'll put up with church. So there's something I got to do as a Christian. You know, it doesn't even sound like you enjoy serving God anymore. Why? Because you lost your joy. Remember Bag of Vance? Lost your swing? Some people lost their joy, but I think God came to get it back to you today. Oh, say amen, somebody. Now, we just said, God, Jesus, but turn to somebody and say, God, joy, God, joy, God, joy. He says, God is our refuge and strength, our very present help. Remember how excited you were about Jesus? Come on, get that excitement back. And you know what I found? It's not some major thing that's got to happen. It is a decision. The Bible says, delight. You delight yourself in the Lord. You delight. I decide that I'm going to delight myself. Come on, when you were out there smoking weed in the past before, in B.C., before Christ, they didn't have to say delight yourself. They, they didn't, no, no, you enjoyed. <laughs> Amen, somebody. It's a decision. I choose to delight myself. I choose to delight myself in Jesus. I choose to delight. Somebody's feeling that. I choose to delight myself also in the Lord. He says, God is our refuge and he is our strength. And he says, he, he says the very present help. Everybody say present help. Verse 2, uh, uh, even when we're in trouble, therefore we will not... I won't be afraid. Why? Because when I'm afraid or when I'm fearful, I give the devil a platform. Did you know to walk in courage like we were talking about at the beginning? I'll have a scripture for you guys next week because I want us to have a scripture we're standing on. I believe God made us an unshakable ministry. I found that scripture, and I was supposed to bring it today. But I believe God made us unshakable even in dark times. I mean, no, we cannot and we will not be moved. Why? He said that this is a time of progression, and he says you're going to move forward, and you're not going backwards. Somebody better shout in here. Amen, somebody. If I'm going to progress, it means I got to go forward. It means I can't look back where those old issues are. I mean, you know, that's not for me. That's for buzzers. I'm an eagle. Buzzers deal with dead, dead things, dead issues. We already handled that. We already talked about that. But how many know eagles fly high? They fly high above all, uh, all the challenge, all the trouble. In fact, look at me. Eagles use that thermal draft, that wind that trouble brings to lift them higher. Shout amen. Oh, come on. I receive. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap. Push somebody and prophesy. Say you're going higher, whether you know it or not. You're going to go higher, no matter what's pushed your way. We're going higher. So no matter what, I can still, I can still open my wings up. And when I open my wings, no matter what's happening to me, no matter how I'm being talked about, I can still go higher because I'm not on my own. I'm, 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 I'm walking with him. I'm soaring with him in 2024. 2024 is your year to soar. Say amen, somebody in here. And I want to show you a scripture, and we're talking about passages uh, on Palm Sunday, and I want to go to Psalms real quick because it exemplifies a lot here that's happening. Why? Because the very thing they said, you'll see it quoted in the scripture I'm going to give you uh, in this passage. You're going to see it about four times. And what I want you to see in this, and I'll, I'll give it to you, but what I want you to see in essence when you look at this, Number one, Israel gets in trouble, <laughs> like many of us. Number two, they cry out to God. Number three, he delivers them out of their distresses. Number four, he says what he desires after he delivers them. Let's do it again. Israel gets in trouble. Say, that's been me in the past. Number two, they cried out to God. Number three, he delivered them out of their distresses. Oh, I love it when God delivers me. Hey, but how many know he is a deliverer? He's not just a healer. He's a deliverer. He's not just a deliverer. He's a promoter. Say amen, somebody here. There's aspects to him he wants you to see this year. And number four, he says that uh, he, 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 he says what he desires after he delivers them. So let's get right, to, right there. Psalms 107. Is this good? Psalms 107, and we're going to go 4 through 8, New King James Version. Let's read it together. Psalms 107, 4 through 8, and you're going to read with me with some passion. How many passionate people out there? 
Come on, let's read with some passion. Three, two, one. Ready, read. This is the first one. This is the first time it said. Three, two, one. Ready, read. They wandered in the wilderness in a desolate way. They found no city to dwell in. Verse 5. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Verse 6. They cried out to the Lord in their trouble. And what happened? God is so faithful. What did he do? He delivered them out of their distresses, verse 7. And he led them forth by the right way that they might go into the city for a dwelling place. All right, verse 8. Oh, this is his heart now. Oh, that men would just give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and, and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Oh, that's good stuff. Okay, let's, let's drop down a little bit. Verse 11, let's read it. It says, because they rebelled, come on, three, two, one, ready, read. Because they rebelled against the words of God and they despised the counsel of the Most High. How many ever been there where God gave you a word and you wasn't feeling that word right then? I hear you, but I don't know about that. And then you go do something else only to find out you really should have did what he said. Am I talking to somebody in here? How many ever been there? See, I have the gift of gab. But how many ever been there where God said, hold your peace, don't say nothing in this meeting? And there was something about what was being said that you said, Ugh. and if you would have just kept your mouth closed, it would have been all right. How many have been there? Praise God. All right. Let, let's read it. Verse 11. He says, because they rebelled against uh, the words of God. Keep reading and despised the counsel of the Most High, verse 12. Therefore he brought down their heart with what? With labor. They fell down, and there was none to help. Don't you love it when God just removes all the help? All you got to look to is him. Amen. Verse 13, come on. Then they cried out to the Lord. There was nowhere else to look in their trouble, and what happened? He saved them. Hallelujah. He saved them out of their distresses. He brought them out of the darkness, out of darkness and the shadow of death, and broke the, their chains in pieces. God's heart. One more time. Verse 15. Oh, that men would just give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. You don't need a reason to praise. He's already given you enough reason to last you the rest of your life. Say amen, somebody in here. He says, I prefer you made that a lifestyle. Come on, let's go a little bit further. Come on. Psalms 107. I'm almost there. Psalms 107, 18 through 22. Let's read it. Their soul aboard all manner of food, and they drew near to the gates of death. Oh, my goodness. Verse 19. Then they cried out to the Lord, their, the Lord in their trouble. Anybody cried out to God in the midst of trouble? Look at me. Have they ever left you there? That's not the God we serve. Shout hallelujah. And he saved them out of their distresses. Verse 20. I love this verse. He, sometimes he will show, and then sometimes all he needs to send you is his word. Why? Because his word will not return to him void. But it will accomplish the purpose whereunto he turn to somebody and say, You don't always need him to show up, you just need his word to be there. Say amen. So he sent his word. Keep reading. He sent his word and and healed them and delivered them from, from their destruction. And here it is again. Come on, verse 21. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord. Isn't that a song? Oh, that men would pray. Yeah, I thought, okay. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them sacrifice the sacrifices of, of thanksgiving. Last one. I just wanted you to see it four times. Give you three. Out of, Bible says out of mouth of two or three witnesses. We're giving you four. Last one. Psalm 107, 26 to 31. Let's read it together quickly. Three, two, one. Ready, read. They mounted up to the heavens. They go down again to the depths. Their soul melts. Why? Because of trouble. Listen, don't let your soul melt because of the things that are about to hit the earth. Amen, somebody. Listen, he didn't leave you. God says, I got you prepared. Look, you could have been born at any time in history, and he, choo he chose for you to be here now. 
So the fact that you are here now, how many know he sent you here with an assignment? And all the grace to get through it, all the equipment you need to get through it, he, he sent that when he sent Stacy. When he said Stacy, and it came to your mom's mind and say, this is what we're going to call her. How many understand he equipped you when he sent you here? It's a package deal, man, and that package deal is time sensitive. Say amen at the right time. You're going to have the right word for what God has you walking through. Say amen, somebody. Is that good? So good preaching, Pastor Ron. I appreciate that. They reel, they reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man <laughs> and are at their, I thought that was interesting. How many ever been there when you heard that expression? Pastor, you better pray. Somebody better pray because I'm at my wit's end with her. I'm telling you. We're at the wit's end. I ain't, I ain't, we ain't going to keep doing it. <laughs> but I, that's, that's, where did they get that from? The Bible. They got to the, how many know your wit's end is, we, we, we about there now. Amen, somebody. I'm about to drop all of this now. I'm at my wit's end dealing with this. But look at what happened when they were at their wit's end. What does the Bible say? He says, they reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their, at their wit's end. Amen, somebody. Verse 28, then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and what happens? He brings them out of their distresses. He calms a storm that got them all nervous. So that the, the waves are still now. Say amen. Verse 30. Then they are glad because they are quiet. Uh, so he guides them to the desired haven. Oh, my God. He's asking. Come on now. This is the heart of the Father. He says, oh, that men would just give thanks to the Lord for his Goodness, four times, wow, and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap real quick. Now, he's not rebuking them. Everybody get that? He's not rebuking them for crying out to him in the midst of their trouble. He's not rebuking them for that. He's actually saying, I wish, back to old that man, he's saying, I wish that this was a lifestyle for you. I wish that this was a lifestyle for you. Look at me, and you gave me thanks all the time. In other words, you're setting your house up. The atmosphere is good, not because you got the AC on, but the atmosphere is good because you're a thermostat, and you set the temperature in that house with your praise. Come on, somebody in here. Not just when you are in trouble. How many ever been in those buildings where it says break glass in case of, yeah, so you, you break that. But he's saying that's not, I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be your cosmic bellhop or, or, or Santa Claus. He says, I want to be that guy. I, wanna, I want you to make that a lifestyle where we can dwell together, where we can have fellowship together, not just when you're in trouble. He says, I am your God. He says, I am your deliverer. In fact, I am your king. Say amen, somebody. But I wish that you would regularly give thanks to God, not just because of what he did for you yesterday, but because of his goodness to the children of man. Come on, it's wonderful works that he does. Give the Lord a hand clap if you got that. Is that good, somebody? He said, I wish you would give me thanks all the time. Why? Because I don't want you just to worship at church. I want you to be a worshiper. I don't want you just to praise me when the, when, when the, when the uh, singers get up and sing. He says, I want you to be a praiser. Say amen. I'm going to remember the days where people were so excited they couldn't go through a sentence without saying, praise God. Hallelujah. And they would, they would talk. I mean, you know, we, we got a little bit more undercover now. Oh, say amen, somebody. <laughs> say amen. Are y'all here? Amen. Listen, he says, we can cry out to God in this year, 2024. You can do that. He'll answer us. But he says this, let this kingdom culture, he said, don't let, he said, let this kingdom culture transform you, not this secular culture. Because when this secular culture begins to, to, to move in, how many know it pushes you in the other direction? To where it hardens you and your heart is not soft anymore when it comes to Jesus and his people. Amen, somebody. 
What's interesting, look at me, is the same streets where they were crying, Hosanna, Hosanna. Not too long from there were the same streets they said, kill him, crucify him. Same people. Same people. They were like, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And I believe they meant what they were saying. But how many know people are fickle? Oh, now, come on. How many have been saved more than a year? Now, I don't say don't. I, look at me. I, I'm not saying don't trust nobody. <laughs> but I'm saying if you're going to place all your eggs in a basket, let it be in his basket. Amen. Because people, uh, you know, anybody is capable of anything. All you got to do is set, you know, set up the right things and the right parameters. And if you don't believe that, you're a fool. Amen, somebody. Now, as you begin to walk this out and you begin to grow, God will point out people and say, you can trust them. You can walk with them. You can do this. But what I'm saying is if you're going to place all your eggs in somebody's back, let it be in his basket. Oh, yeah, give the Lord a hand clap. Don't be in crisis. Find yourself always at the other end of obedience, on the other side. Always find yourself in Christ. I'm in Christ, not in crisis. Amen, somebody in here. See, when that's the case and somebody does you wrong, you can always get your heart right and find yourself in a place of joy again. But if my being in joy has, is dependent on how you treated me, I'm going to know my life is going to be like this. Craziest roller coaster ride you've ever been on. Why? Because people are people and people can be fickle. That's why he gives you wisdom in choosing friends. He's, he talks about the righteous. He says, uh, what, what does he say? Uh, he, he says, evil communication corrupts good manners. In other words, sometimes you got to watch who you're walking with. Why? Because it can change the game for you. Amen, somebody. Turn to somebody and say, is he talking to you right now? Praise God. All right, I'm at number two. Glory to God. We might do this. Give the Lord a hand clap. Point number two, thank you. Point number two. <laughs> Point number two, fear not. Somebody shout, fear not. Fear not. Don't be afraid. Don't get nervous. He says, fear not. Keep on believing. Well, we might lose our job. That's all right. The job was never your sustainer. God was your sustainer. Isn't it amazing that sometimes, you know, and again, look at me. You always got to say what you're not saying before you say it. And that is, you know, I'm not talking about the people who sometimes your job pulls on you during church time. Don't miss what I'm saying. Amen, somebody. I always have to say what I'm not saying. But what I am saying is, isn't it amazing that sometimes that stuff pulls you away from your steadfastness? The very thing that God bless you with is now the things that's, that's pulling you, tearing you away from times of fellowship. You got to make sure you stay in proximity to your sustainer because the job can be gone at any time. Things can get rough and it's gone. Now what do you do? Well, I go back to my sustainer. Hey, promotion doesn't come from the north, south, east, or west. Promotion comes from the Lord. So if it comes from the Lord, I will be fine. Oh, shout hallelujah to hear somebody. Glory to God. John chapter 12. I'm going to keep going. John chapter 12, 14 through 15, because I got a real point I need to make. John 12, 14 through 15. Are you here? Shout amen. Let's read it. Three, two, one, ready, read. Then Jesus, when he had found a young donkey, <laughs> sat on it as it is written. What did he say? Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming. But notice now, and we're going to talk about this later, he don't come like a king. Sitting on a, he's not even just sitting on a donkey, but the donkey's baby. <laughs> We're going to talk about that. I think you need to see that. Amen, somebody. Look at me. Pastor Ron always giving us something that just, my God. They've never, I have never seen them get it right on Palm Sunday pictures. Ever. Why? Because if you go to the book of Matthew, they didn't just get the donkey. They got the donkey and the colt. And Jesus didn't sit on the donkey. Jesus sat on the colt. Think about it. It almost looks silly. And it's not to, you know, upset anybody or, 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 or you know what I'm saying. But you need to know what he did it and why, why, what he did and why he did it. 
We're going to touch that. Say amen, somebody. But never dig up in fear what you've already sown in faith. Are y'all here? So this is the command. He says, fear not. Turn to somebody and say, fear not. Don't worry, I'm going to get to it. Fear not. Say, fear not. It's a command. God is not asking, amen, somebody. He's speaking in the imperative sense, but it is, look at me, not a negative command. It's a positive command. Say amen, somebody. There are several uh, commands that God has released in his word that are positive. This is one of them because in, in its imperative form, I mean, no, he's saying, don't be afraid. I got you. Don't be afraid. I, we're going to take care of this. I told you I'd never leave you nor forsake you. I told you, well, I'm just here in this apartment. I told you I will be with you even to the end of the age. I got this. Turn to somebody and say, God's got you. God's got you covered. Something, of the, something amazing is about to happen to you. Something amazing in 2024 is about to take place for you. There's about to be a transfer that you didn't even expect that is going to happen. Why? Because his promise, the promise of increase is still over your life. How do you know that, Pastor? Because every time the Lord dealt with your heart to sow, you didn't hesitate. So it will happen just like he said. Oh, if you got that, say amen, somebody. He says, no, no, no. He says, something amazing is about to take place for you. He says, remember, he says, remember the attitude of faith is joy. Fear not is mentioned in the Bible a hundred plus times in the Word. Fear not. Don't be afraid. Fear not. And then different forms of that, like don't be afraid, is mentioned over, it's about 365 times, which means all through the year, you need to know, don't you dare fear. Don't you dare fear. I'm with you. Don't you dare create a platform. Well, what about my marriage? Don't you dare get nervous about that. He said, I'm here. Don't say amen, somebody. What about me being single and alone? He said, don't you be afraid, girl. You know I'm working things out but, but behind the scenes. He says, I'm here with you. Say amen, somebody in here. Turn to somebody and say, that's your word right there. <laughs> there was, listen, he's saying if 365 times a year he's saying, don't be afraid, fear not, what is he actually doing? He's saying there will be several opportunities this year to be afraid. Several opportunities this year to fear. He just said, don't take any of them. Don't take any of it. And if you can't handle the news you're watching, don't watch it. Can't handle what you're seeing. If it's going to provoke you to fear, if it's going to cause you to start shaking in your boots, he says, don't watch it. While you're doing that, how many know this thing is the most accurate? Oh, come on in here. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap if you got that. Listen, don't put your faith in the, the, the prophets on the news. Put your faith in, in, in God. Amen, somebody. Put your trust in God. How I many know if you put your faith in God or your trust in him, you'll always be standing in the winner's circle. If I got somebody that can identify with that, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Even though it's a command, it's a good command. He's saying, relax, I got you. Anybody ever had that? Your buddy say, yo, yo. He said, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> well, you do the work then. What, what was happening? That's total peace. And he says, that's the place he wants you. It's like saying any, anything, like something like we say things like, I'll take care of this. Anybody been there? Getting ready to pay? And they said, no, I got you. Oh, well, glory to God. Or be happy. Don't worry. Be happy. Lighten up. Anybody ever had somebody say it? If God's telling you, don't worry, he says, I'm here. I got you. Fear not. Amen, somebody. If he's saying that, he's saying it for good reason. Last night, uh, I was writing a guy. And it's amazing. People say, well, you, you give prophetic words all the time. But no, the Lord said, write him and say these things. Do you know, even in stuff like that, I, I fear tries to grip you. What if it's wrong? What if he's saying, what the heck are you talking about? But I have learned. You just need to see, because here's the thing. The devil always, why does the devil get fearful when you obey God? See, courage is not the absence of fear. Courage, when you say, I can stand in faith, though fear is present in the room. I can stand in faith, and I will walk right through that door, and because there's, there's a blessing on the other side of my obedience, even if there's fear right at the door. Oh, say, men, somebody. 
Now he wrote back. He was crazy excited. He's like, man, I don't know how you knew all that, da, da, da. But when I saw right, it just the Lord kept saying, say this, say this, say this, say this. Tell him over the last quarter, here's what he dealt with. Tell him this is going to happen. Tell him even the thing with the marriage, da, da, da. And this is the guy that's miles away. But the Lord said, say this. You have to understand, fear tries to grip you. Why? Because the enemy needs a platform or he cannot stop you. Turn to somebody and say, stay away from fear. Stay out of fear. Say amen, somebody in here. When I saw my first angel, uh, you know, you see a 12-foot dude. <laughs> I mean, you understand. Uh, I don't know why we think, but we feel like it's probably going to do something to me. And so first thing you do is, yee, what, what, what are you doing? You're fearful. Now, the angel that dealt with me did not say, don't fear. He just looked at me like this. When he did that, I said, well, glory to God, it's mine. <laughs> Save it, somebody. And the peace of God, after he did that, flooded my heart. Amen, somebody in here. Think about it. What do, who is bad enough to, be, to, to, to stand against our God? Say amen, somebody in here. No, that was, I was waiting for an answer. Nobody. Say amen, somebody. Anybody ever needed an angel to show up in your situation? Or in, in, in times in the Bible where they were outnumbered, where Israel were outnumbered and, I, I mean, you know, outmanned. Ever been outnumbered and outmanned and overwhelmed? Anybody? Glory to God. How, how many know God's command of you is fear not? Ever, been, got, ever got an unfavorable doctor's report? And you knew, like, ah, last thing I need right now is this. And what happens? He says, don't fear. The only reason I allow them to give you the doctor's report is so you'll know where to aim your faith. That, that, that's that. You're not a man that's out of covenant. You're a man that's in covenant. Oh, somebody give the Lord a hand clap if you got it. God says, have no fear. Jesus, I receive. God says, have no fear. Jesus is here. He says, this looks like a job for my El Shaddai, my El Shaddai. Remember, again, this is, this is what he says. He commands, even in Genesis, it shows up three times. Don't fear, don't fear, don't fear, don't get in fear. I mean, you understand, you're going to win your faith fight in 2024. Let me prophesy to you right now. In 2024, I know you're expecting generational blessing. How many know God's going to bless you in 2024? Some of you are expecting things to be repaired and restored because, Pastor, during the time of restoration, I know you, you said it, and I believe that word. But how many understand God's going to complete what he started? He who's begun a good work in me, and I don't know if you know faith life, but he's begun a good work in us. Let me prophesy to you. He is able and he will complete that work in me. Shout amen, somebody in here. God begun. If he spoke it, how many understand he's going to make it good? He didn't set your sail there for you to miss your destination. Say amen, somebody. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 13 says, For it is God who works in me, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and 14, it says, Now thanks be to God, which always causes me to do what? triumph in Christ. As long as I'm in Christ, I'm going to triumph. Say amen, somebody in here. See, that's important. We understand things like Hosanna. Are you following what I'm saying? Because we, we, if you don't know what's being said, you're going to do like everybody else. Now, the movie I like, it's not my favorite movie. My favorite movie of all times is Gladiator. I understand what it is to be an embattled warrior, but still be champ. Amen, somebody. Second favorite movie is Troy. I, I watched that movie only for about four or five quotes. I have to watch the whole, whole movie to get to those quotes. They say, hey, the one of us that loses now, he says, uh, we're going to make a pack. And then, you know, Achilles says, there is no packs between lions and men. That's it. That means you're about to, you, you about to get killed right now. <laughs> we ain't making no deals. Amen, somebody in here. But I watched that movie just for those four things. But there is another movie that I like, and I think this got past you, and it's called Tombstone. How many like Tombstone? Doc, Doc Holliday. We went to church today, and Pastor was talking about movies. Okay, li listen. Listen. He says, I'll be your huckleberry. 
right? I'll be a huckleberry. Now, how many know huckleberry is huckleberry is an actual fruit? Huckleberry, but that's not, if you slow it down, that's not what he was saying. He said huckleberry. Well, what was happening? The guy was saying, anybody that wants to fight me, we're going to fight to the death. I don't care who it is, da, da, da. So here's this shadow guy coming through the streets, coming right to you. There is God. And what did he say? I'll be your huckleberry. What is that? You didn't even think about it. You just thought it was a cute name. But it helps when you have context. A huckle is the handles on a casket. So what was he saying? A huckle is... <laughs> You're like, word? <laughs> no, a, a huckle is handles on a casket. Are y'all here? Barry that he was talking about, he was using the play on words, B-U-R-Y. He says, I'll put you in the ground. You, you want to go? He says, I, I, I'm your huckleberry. I, I, I'll put you in the ground. Are y'all here? In other words, whether he said berry or bearer, how many understand berry? He said, I'll be the one to put you in the ground. And then if he says, if he says bearer, he says, I'll be your Paul bearer. Because after this fight, gunfight right here, we're going to be carrying you out of here. Man, what if we were bold enough against the devil like that? Oh, say amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap if you got it. Point three, last one. Uh, this is what I want you to see. Uh, this is something important that Jesus did. Jesus not only spoke, but he demonstrated something he really wanted you to get. And as much as y'all celebrate Palm Sunday, most of you miss this part. I'm not saying you, you're not smart, you know, you're, you're annoying it. Smart self, you're good. But I want you to see this. Say amen, somebody. So, point three. I made it to point three, y'all. Oh God, this is starting to be a habit. Point three, preparing for the God of the unexpected. How many know when he showed up, he came in a way they didn't expect him to show up? And when he comes back, he's coming in a way you didn't expect him to come back. Not like that. Say amen, somebody in here. Trying to get you to see something. So let me just give you this and we are going home. Is that all right? Has this been good? Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. Point number three, preparing for the God of the unexpected. We know that Jesus is coming through. Even after we pray, how many know if, if you pray in the Word, you usually, uh, if you go with John chapter 5, I believe it's 1 John 5, how many understand you should have no doubt that he's going to answer that, that prayer because he said if you pray according to the Word of God, he says you have the petition that you requested. Oh, say amen, somebody. Here's our challenge, and this is what mess with people. We just don't always know after we pray how he's going to come through. We know it's going to come through, but not how he's going to come through. Not, I like to write this, and you write this down in your notes, not as you expect. Not as God's going to do a lot of a myriad of things for you this year, and it's going to be really good, and it's going to overflow the blanks with his goodness. But let me look at me. It's not as you expect. Say amen. Let's go back. John chapter 12, verse 15. I'm going to do this quickly. He says, John chapter 12, verse 15. He says, fear not, daughters of Zion, or daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting, not on a donkey, but on a donkey's coat or donkey's foal, right? He says, uh, in other words, just not as you expected. Now, what is he quoting? He's quoting Zechariah 9 and 9. Let's read that real quick, and then I'll go to my point. Zechariah 9 and 9 says, re, come on, come on, let's read together. Zechariah 9 and 9, King James Version. Zechariah 9 and verse 9, 3, 2, 1, ready, read. He says, rejoice greatly, O daughter of thy and shout, O daughter of Jerusalem, behold what's happening. Your king is coming to you. Oh, hallelujah. Say amen, somebody. He is just and having salvation. Now listen, you can't miss this because you heard him say it, but you missed it. Lowly, riding on a donkey, a coat, the foal of a donkey. See, there's something that's either very right, and we know it's right because it's Jesus, or it's very wrong with that picture, right? 
here is the word of God saying the king's coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming, but he's not coming like you expected him to come. He's not coming like you think he's going to come. In that day, how many know when kings came to town, first of all, they didn't ride on donkeys. Look at me. King didn't come to town riding on a donkey. Kings rode on war horses. You had to come in there. People needed to know this is you. This is a king. Oh, say amen, somebody. Are you here? Why is that important, Pastor? Because they measured horses from the bottom with palms, the palms of their hands. They went up from the ground all the way to the shoulder. Everybody get this? So this is how they measured it. So think about this. If that's what they did, if you were a military leader, it was important that your horse was higher than everybody else's. So they had to put two or three more hands up there so the military leader would be higher than everybody else. Yet if you were a king, your horse had to be higher than everybody's. Trying to help you here. So what happened? More hands because you were higher. Oh, the king's coming. And you knew who the king was. So why did Jesus upset the apple cart? Are y'all here? A king, you know, he rode the highest horse. This is where we get the term, girl, you need to get off your high horse. That's what I'm saying. That's where we get the term from, Right? But Jesus, when he came to town, what did Jesus do, guys? He didn't just ride a donkey. He rode the, the foal of a donkey. Remember Zechariah, the king is coming? Now, he warned you how he would be. Matthew chapter 11, 28 through 29. Don't worry, I'm about done, three minutes. He says this, come, come unto me, all you who are laboring and are heavy laden. He says, why? I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and do what? I want you to learn my way of doing things. Amen, somebody. Why? Because I am meek, I'm gentle, and I am I'm lowly in heart. And if you follow me, you'll find rest unto your soul. That's a picture of Jesus coming. But in that day, think about this. Jesus, when he showed up, let's go back to the chart. King, horses up here. Military leader, bam, horses there. Everybody see this? Soldier, bam, horses here. Y'all got that? Regular horse. Donkey, foal of a donkey. Y'all seen those low rider motorcycles? <laughs> I wouldn't put past it that Jesus' feet almost dragged the ground. In other words, the way that they thought he... If you are the Messiah, you're going to come in like this. But this is not how he came. See, they were looking for, notice when, <laughs> are y'all catching? Are y'all good? When Jesus showed up, the, the way they thought they wanted him to show up, they gave him palms. But the way, when he showed up, the way he, they needed him to show up. They gave him thorns. You should have think about that. Why? Because they, are, are you catching this? He did not come as a king, an earthly king. He said, the greatest among you is going to be the one that's. Do y'all understand how if we're going to win, we got to change our perspective? Yeah, yeah, you can give the Lord. Yeah, you can go there. You got to. We got to change our perspective when he showed up. Think about it. Here's the mother, and it makes sense. If, the only place you're going to find what I'm saying is if you go to the book of Matthew, you will find that it wasn't just a donkey. It was, it was the foal, and it was, it was the donkey, the mother. That's why you don't see that in any of the pictures. Why? Because to keep the little, the, the, the little donkey to be okay and the, the little donkey to be at peace, mom was there. And Jesus wasn't even on that donkey. Jesus was on the lowly one and rode through the streets. In other words, he came like God wanted you to see this. He said, if you want to be victorious, the way up is going to be the way down. 
The way that's high is the way that's going to be low. Say amen, somebody. He said, every man will declare his own goodness. And, and he says, you know, you, you guys receive honor that comes from each other. But he says, I'm demonstrating something to you. He says, I'm demonstrating the fact that I don't need the honor that comes from men, but I need the honor that comes from God only. Somebody shout hallelujah in here if you got that. They were looking for a temporary answer, but Jesus was bringing a permanent solution. He said, if you want this thing to really turn around for you, I am demonstrating with the time that I have here, I am demonstrating a posture that is not common for you, but it's heaven's posture if you want to be victorious as a believer. Somebody give the Lord a shout. Did y'all get anything out of this? Come on, you can do better than that. Did y'all get anything out of this? Look for Jesus, you'll find him. He says, seek me, you'll find me when you search for me with all of your heart. Listen, the challenge with that group is the same as with the challenge with Naaman. He said, I thought you as a prophet, you would come out and be this way. And did you know, Naaman almost lost his blessing because he had a way he saw it. Jesus showed up, not, not king's horse, not military war horse, not soldier's horse, not regular horse, not donkey. Give me the lowest thing out there. Why? Because in my life, I want to demonstrate to you that the way you'll be exalted, the way you'll go high, is you got to first go low. Say amen, somebody. Was this good today? Come on, come on. Was this good today? Somebody give the Lord. Come on. Was this good today? Somebody give the Lord a hand clap if you got that. Most, of the, most times when we want to be recognized, understood, seen, and revered and all of that, we push ourselves up. He says, that's not how you want to do it. He says, we push it, and then we put others down. We talk about what they don't have. Why? Because it, it, it pushes us up. But he says, no, no, no. He says, no, he says, prefer one another. Push somebody else up. Don't worry about that. Push him up because he says, when you humble, when you when you humble yourself, he says, when you humble yourself, he says, then it's on God's calendar to exalt you. It's on God's calendar to promote you. But you got to be okay uh, going low so that God can take you high. Is that good, somebody? Come on, one last time. Give the Lord Jesus. You can do better than that. Give the Lord Jesus a great big hand clap. Somebody in here. You want to be like Jesus? Be meek, be gentle, be lowly. Amen, somebody. The Bible says if they're going to bless you, let another man praise you. You don't need to exalt yourself right now. Let another man praise you. Amen, somebody. Do it as unto the Lord and not to men. And God said every time I'll make sure that the promotion you need comes your way. Amen. How many ready to give in the house of the Lord? You can do better than that. Come on. How many ready to give in the house of the Lord? Amen. How many know this is your opportunity to prosper? Amen, somebody. Now, we're going to bring the Lord's tithe because we know that that belongs to him. Amen. Tithing is your covenant connector. And you want to tithe. Listen, let me, on behalf of my wife and my daughter and all of us, let me just say, keep on believing God, God, and keep on giving like you are. Keep so. Come on. How many know we believe in God for 100% tithers? And y'all are getting better and better and better and better. See, when you do your part, then the move of God doesn't snag. It's not that we won't get there, but it's awesome when everybody does their part in the house. So tithe today. Honor the Lord with the tithes. Not because you have to, but, but because you get to. Amen, somebody in here. Because I love God and I'm the seed of Abraham, not the seed of Moses. Thank God for Moses. But Moses was a giver of the law. The seed of Abraham, how many know Abraham was a, you the tither. He's a tither. Not because it was a law that was written, but because of his heart. God, you blessed me so much. Part of my praise, part of what I'm going to give you is a tenth of everything I got. Amen, somebody. And remember, your offering is everything above and beyond the tithe. Amen, somebody. How many know your seed prophesies your future? 
How many, because you're here, you are excited because your seed is representing your future right now? My seed is prophesying today, Pastor. I'm not just doing this. My seed prophesies on my behalf. The Bible says this. He said, he who sows sparingly shall, uh, will do what? He says, you're also going to reap sparingly. He says, he who sows bountifully shall do what? Reap also bountifully. He says, every man as his purpose in his heart, so let him or her give, not grudgingly, nor of necessity. Why? Because God loves a, and God is able to make. He's not just able, he's going to do it because he's faithful to do it. He's able to make all grace abound towards you that you'll always have. Shout right quick. Get it on your tongue. Say, in 2024, I'll always have all sufficiency for all things and say I will abound to every good and charitable work. Come on, let's worship God with the tithe and the offering. Come on. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, ushers. Come on, somebody here. Heir of salvation, purchased of God. Come on, faith life. Born of his spirit. Come on, faith life. Hallelujah. Come on. Help me say. Help me sing, come on. Praise is pouring out, praise is pouring out. And I will dance in freedom. You have brought me out, prophesy. You have brought me out, you have brought me out. What more say? I got a song and I'm singing loud. Praise is pouring out, praise is pouring out. And I will dance in your freedom now. You have brought me out. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands in the presence of the Lord. Somebody in here. Glory to God. Was that good stuff today? Come on, amen, somebody. Did you get that today? Glory to God. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Yeah, don't miss that opportunity. I actually got to put mine in an envelope. So we will do that. Amen, somebody. Stretch your hands out toward this offering real quick. And remember, we're no longer going to be seed-minded. We're going to be what? Amen. We're no longer going to be need-minded. We're going to be what? Amen. How many know what that offer, that, that harvest looks like? You don't have to think about the seed anymore. Now it's, it's harvest time. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap if you know what it looks like and you, you believe you receive, so you'll have. Amen, somebody. This year, I want you to get more results in 2024 than you had over the past three years. How many are going to join their faith with mine? But what that means is from this point on, never throw seed. God needs you to sow it. It's sown seed when I hear the voice of God. And I, 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 whatever he's saying to sow, that's why we never do gimmicks at Faith Life. First three people that give $1,000. That's just, come on, man, that's not true. Stop. Amen, somebody. Just whatever God says to you. Now, if he says give 1000 obey him. Because how many know for him what you're giving is seed? That means he's got something huge for you. If what I, if my thousand is seed, then that means something way bigger than a thousand is coming. Oh, say amen, somebody in here. And the Bible says he watches over that seed. He's looking at it. He is, and I, you know, you can say, well, Jesus don't look at the money. Well, he was right at the offering bucket looking at it, watching what they put in. Amen, somebody. So how many know God cares about your harvest? That's why he is the Lord of the harvest. Amen, somebody. Lord of God, stretch your hand out toward this offering. And I'm just going to pray real quick. I'm going to stand in agreement with you. Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord, we bless you and we honor you. Lord, we just thank you for the word of the Lord on Palm Sunday. Thank you for the lessons that we got from the donkey ride. We thank you, Lord God, more than that, the example, Lord, that you've set for us. And, Lord, you have demonstrated and given us a pattern as to how to prosper. Your word declares, Lord God, seek ye first 
the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And you said, harvest all these things shall be added unto you. So we thank you in advance as we stand here in faith on Palm Sunday. We thank you in advance, Lord God, for a mighty harvest because of the seed that they're sowing in obedience today. Thank you, Lord, for the game changer. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, for even those uh, online, on live stream that are sowing as well faithfully. I thank you, Lord, for blessing them, causing their uh, barns to burst open. And Lord, their coffers to be full. In Jesus' name, their accounts, Lord, to increase because of their obedience to the word of the Lord. We give you praise for it. You say, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. We thank in advance, Lord God, for the harvest that is now theirs because of their obedience. In Jesus' mighty name, and all who agree with that, shout in. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen, amen, amen. Was that good stuff? Glory to God. Well, did you enjoy it today? Turn to somebody and say, how about you? How about you? Did you get anything out of that today? Life lessons. How many got those life lessons? Hosanna. Let worship. Let praise. Let that be a lifestyle, not just a temporary petition, not just something you give him today. We don't tip God anymore at Faith Life. We don't tip God. No, no, no. We're going to give you the glory and the honor that's due you. He says, fear not. Why? Because if you keep believing, there's something on the other side of your standing in faith. And last but not least, what did he say? Or what did we say? My people that heard me. You don't remember? Number three? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Expect the God of the unexpected. In other words, God will answer you, just not always the way you thought. But he's still going to answer you. Amen, somebody? Give God some praise today. Did y'all enjoy it? Now, is there anybody here who does not know the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior? Yeah, often. As Savior, and you would like to. Is there anybody that does not know the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior and you would like to? Listen, we talked about our Savior and we talked about those things, but, uh, you know, I have to sometimes not forget that there's some people that don't even know him as Savior. They know of Jesus. They've heard stories, but they just don't walk with him like that. Amen, somebody. And so we would like to extend to you the opportunity to receive our Master, our Savior, our Lord. Amen, somebody. So let's do this right now, whether you're online or whether you're in the building, so I can get you out of here. Let's bow our heads real quick. And I want you to repeat after me and mean it with all your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for my sins. Say, come into my heart right now and save me. Say, Father, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he died on the cross for all my sins. And he rose again for my justification. Thank you, Jesus, for coming into my heart now. Say, Lord, your word declares that right now you and the Father are making your home inside me. Say, thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Come on, say, thank you, Jesus, for making me whole. And say, from this day forward, by the help of God, say, I'm going to live for you in Jesus' name. Come on, give the Lord a praise in here. Hallelujah. Right now, the angels in heaven are having a conniption fit over one soul that gives their heart to Jesus Christ. So whether you're online or whether you're in the building, now, Miss Stacy or either of you come out right quick. If you did that and you sincerely gave your heart to Jesus in the building, I want you to see Deacon Stacy because we have some stuff we want to give you. Praise God to assist you as you take your first baby steps as a babe in Christ. You're my brother now. You're my sister in Christ. Amen, somebody. If you're online, we don't want to miss the opportunity, so make sure you go in the drop down and say, that prayer passed around just prayed, man, I gave my heart to Jesus here in my living room. Praise God. We want to know that because we got some info we want to get to you as well so that you don't go blindly in, in this path, one of the most amazing adventures in God you'll ever have. Amen. It's the walk of faith. Amen, somebody. Amen. Praise God. Was this good? 
Give the Lord Jesus a hand clap. Now, if you want to join Faith Life, come on up here real quick, Elder Tucky. If you want to join Faith Life, we're clothing out, but you're saying, you know what? I've come to this church a few times, and I really feel like J.C. is in the house. Now, Jesus is in the house, and you know he is, and you want to be a part of this uh, local church body, please see Elder Tucky, and we got some stuff we want to, I should have said Tammy, right? Am I doing it wrong? Okay, please see Elder Tucky, and uh, she will give you uh, what you need, and we will be excited because you'll be yet another joiner. We've had recently, what, about five families? Glory to God. Give the Lord a hand clap. Glory to God. God is so good. Amen, somebody. Well, this is awesome. Let me prepare to dismiss you. Did y'all enjoy it today? Did y'all learn at least one thing that was kind of fresh and new? Anybody got something that you can take somewhere and minister to your family or minister to them at the cubicle next to you or minister in the office and say, hey, let me talk to you about church and I just want to tell you what happened. Amen, somebody. I think it's important because we can celebrate a thing but not understand a thing. I remember years doing communion and not knowing what it was about. We just did it. I remember baptism, being baptized with my cousins and we told the pastor, keep, keep us, keep me down, keep me longer. Why? We want to see how long we can hold our breath. We didn't get what was happening. Do how many know at a time where you have a knowledge and you understand what it's all about? How many know it makes the victory that much sweeter? Shout amen, somebody in here. Listen, I love you. Don't be a stranger. Please make friends. Release the love of God when we dismiss. I have another uh, little private meeting I have to have in the next 15, 20 minutes. So I love you guys. Turn to somebody and say, I'm so glad you came today. Glory to God. Say, it wouldn't have been the same without you. Amen, somebody. Lift those hands and let me prepare to dismiss you. Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord, we bless you and we honor you. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, Lord God for real life lessons, Lord, uh, on Palm Sunday on this ride that Jesus took. Lord, we just thank you and we bless you. Lord, much seed was administered here today, but we recognize that seed was not the main objective. Harvest was the objective, Lord God. So we thank you, Lord Jesus. You said, and this is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. So Holy Spirit, we pray, give a supernatural recall of the things that were spoken, not just what uh, we heard through pastor, but the mess, the voice that we heard behind the message, so that we can put feet to that word and walk it out. And Father, now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. And the champions in this house of faith and love who will walk in this resurrection grace that we're about to experience, shout it. Amen. I love you. Listen, I'll see you on life groups. Be blessed. Street.